Hey YouTube, Minnesota Eric here. So yesterday while I was out uh, brush cutting, I broke a thing on my tractor. I broke this thing off of that thing there. As you can see, it looks like it's been breaking for a little while. And then the one on the other side looks like it's working too because I can see I can see chip paint there and that's indicative of uh, a crack that's forming and of course it's forming right between where it bolts up there which would be the weakest point unfortunately I got the tractor loader in the way the subframe for the tra uh, tractors loader in the way so I got to drop that out of the way on both sides and thankfully it's a subframe it bolts up in the but the midpoint of the tractor on both sides and if anything it'll give me another opportunity to sort out my uh, skid plate which looks like it took another beating. Anyway, so today we're going to fix the broken thing. Well, you can see here that this has been cracking for some time. Uh, yesterday, the Sprite Silver is where it cracked on the ends and then a very narrow band right in the middle but if you look gee whiz there's one two three four five distinct places where it had uses it's been cracking away just looking at the different color bands right here so i would imagine on the right hand side i'm going to see some in process version of the same thing all right, you two, I'm starting to realize this is going to be more than just a one afternoon job. Uh, simply because I don't have the steel uh, to cut this thing on out. And I, I, uh, I think it's relatively easy. I just got to drop the subframe on out of the way and then cut and weld, uh, cut new plates, grind off. Uh, it's hot. It's really hot out. Grind off this and mount this back onto a new plate so grind out this weld but I think I want to go with either some harder st steel or maybe some thicker steel and uh, so that means I run up to, uh, run on over to uh, Bemidji uh, steel for me to get something locally so anyway that's not going to happen today running on over to Bemidji so I guess we'll just do the prep work today Aim for accuracy. Well, they gotten a little peened. This pin's great. Pin's in great shape. There's one. Get access for the wrench. I've got this supported with a. Uh, I'm sure you can see it, but the wheel of a jack. I've got the jack under there just holding it. No, no pressure, just so I can get my mitts onto the bolts and get the bolts easily on and off, you know? So, okay. There's three of them in total. Oh, let's see. 
you know, hopefully I'm not so fat that I can't get in here. Everybody remember the war movie The Warriors? No? Alright, come on, play! Okay, so we had a little rainstorm come by and get everything wet. It's drying out fast. But uh, now I gotta get these four bolt nuts off so I can drop the rear subframe. I'm supporting it on the passenger side, the right side with with this jack and then on the very fronts I've just stuck in uh, some awls just to hold it there because I got to crawl underneath this thing in order to to uh, run an impact gun Let's see if we can. Come loose. Oh, I gotta turn up the regulator. More, more scooch. So the compressor regulates from uh, 90 to 175 psi. 90 psi, we're getting close to the lower end. So I want this thing to crank its ba way back up to 175. And give my aging Ingersoll Rand gun more oomph. I think my Ingersoll Rand was rated at about four or five hundred foot pounds 30 years ago at 90 psi, so I need more. Okay, uh, got them off off camera because it was just too much fiddling around underneath the tractor to try to aim a camera, keep the camera safe, and run the air tools. And here you can see the two halves. And You can focus. You can see how it was working there, and it's uh, cracked. So I, I want to go get some new new plate stock. I also got the other side off too, and uh, I don't know if you can see this, but there is a bend happening here, right at right at the bolt holes again, same spot, and you can see where the paint just chipped on the both the inside and the outside of the part. So that's cracking as well. In hindsight, I did two things. I don't think I needed to take off the front mounts at all. I think this thing would have draped. Uh, as you can see, I got cribbing up on, on this side, holding it up. So tomorrow, I'll, I'll chase over to Bemidji and get some stock. And I don't know if I'm going to cut it out, torch it out, or plasma cut it out. So, um, I have choices. <laughs> it's good to have choices. All right, YouTube are uh, kind of space challenged here, but I decided probably the best way for me to drill these holes is to uh, go ahead and put everything into a clamp here and clamp it down, hold it down, and then just uh, run the drill press and, and just locate the holes that way We're using the existing plate. Now, this is a metric hole, so this I got a 9 16 in here. It's just a little undersized, and uh, I don't know if I'm going to hog them out with a 5 ace or what, but anyway, yeah, I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. Okay, we'll just move this around. So we can look 
locate on the next hole. We'll get the holes going as best as we can get them. Guess not. problem I had here if you can see this painter stick is I this is like a five and a half inch uh, clamp and I have a six inch piece of material here so I took out one of the jaws well you can see here that it stands a little proud so you're either clamping the top or clamping the bottom but you can't clamp both with the jaw removed They've just got this step here, imagine, just so you can locate the jaw easy. But anyway, that got in the way. That's why I don't have the world's best clamping here. But hey, I got my holes done, so cool. Okay, so the best way I can figure to uh, mark this angle here is to flip this thing upside down. And looking straight down, kind of eyeball it. Get it somewhat centered. And then just to go ahead and... Trace it. Although, you know, I'm thinking maybe I should, <laughs> I'm saying I gotta weld this thing. I should probably flap flap disc this thing first. Okay, let's flap disc this thing first. That would be a better idea. Okay, engage safety squint. Just to take the mill scale off. Kind of dead reckoning here. And I can see where the end was, and I've scratched it up enough where I can locate that when I go to weld it. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing with this side. This side's a little harder because it's still somewhat connected. Well, somewhat. It is connected. This one was in process of breaking, but it hadn't broken. Now, I gotta try to saw this off as cleanly as I can. And I sure don't need these aluminum inserts. One thing I have realized is I wish I had a pump lock on this table. That was the easy one too. Check it out. Focus. Yeah. I gotta grind all that weld off too. This one's gonna be harder because I don't have the space to kinda jack it up if you know what I mean. If you don't recognize this, this is an old 28 volt uh, M28 volt saw. <laughs> the Lennox is... Lennox did really good there. Ooh, I just learned something. Huh. Wow. 
<laughs> All right, that was work. Okay, so I did a couple of trials with my new welder. This was uh, the, the one on the right is the 3 8 inch setting. The one on the left is the half inch setting. And I just wanted to see if I was getting enough gas coming through and just how fat of a weld this thing wants to make and, yeah, and you know, how fast my travel speed should be. Travel speed should probably be faster than what I'm doing here. This little, this too proud, but anyway, it gives me an idea uh, what to expect. For now, I'm just tack welding in using uh, my smaller Multimatic Tech welding these uh, parts on so that when I come by with the with the bigger Multimatic, I'm not going to flex around or anything like that. Especially since this is literally my first welding job using this new new machine. So and I I did exactly two coupons worth of practice. So ooh, let's see. I'm just trying to see my scratches here. Since I've only got one plug in, I gotta go unplug this guy. Look at the size of the gun difference. Ooh. <laughs> the Miller uh, Multimatic 255 versus the venerable old uh, Miller Multimatic 200. Anyway, I gotta go unplug this guy and plug it into this guy. like it's running a little too hot. And it sounds too fast. The frequency sounds fast. Feed speed. Just like my other Miller Multimatic. 
want to slow that down a bit. Shorten up the arc length a little bit too. So this is pulsed. So this is my first, my first pulse. Boy, this welder sure runs a lot hotter than the other one, but it's a much bigger welder too, so that makes sense. Cool. So this guy's got a 15 foot lead, so I got plenty of room here to keep going. But it came with like a 10 foot grounding cable, so I ordered a 25 foot grounding cable so I can get some space. Anyway, hey, uh, I'm gonna let these rascals cool down, then I'm gonna hit them with zinc chromate, our favorite zinc, cold galvanized zinc chromate. Uh, and then I'm going to start putting the tractor back together and I'm pretty confident these are stronger than way stronger than the parts that I pulled out so hopefully these things won't break in my lifetime that's that's the goal I finished making my replacements uh, plates they're because of the length of the bolts issues and, and these are weird metric like 175 bolts not 15 not 2 anyway hard for me to get uh, here in north central Minnesota without special ordering them from Fastenal or wherever. So I didn't want to go any really thicker with this. Uh, so I made this out of half inch plate and uh, went in and of course welded this, this thing here. But what I did do is I made the plates a little wider so I'm hoping that this will be stronger overall. I should have these things like this. So stronger overall. Okay, so we can see how much wider it is. This is good a half inch on either side wider, and I think I can get away with that. So we'll see how this works on out. But now I gotta go ahead and bolt these things in. Well, okay, so I don't quite know what the best way of doing this is, but uh, I'm thinking. I think I gotta get a jack in here. I'm going to have to tighten up the fronts before I can get these things to line up. Err, what a pain in the hassle. Okay, well, that's what we're probably going to have to do here. here and what we're trying to do is tighten this rascal up a little bit. If we can. Sense the tightness of that. <laughs> Working in the sun is hard because you got. Buku contrast. It's, it's hard for cameras, it's hard for eyes. Now, you can't see this and I can't see this. We're both, we're both blind now.
It is 19, right? I feel like I should put a ratchet on this. All right, so let's see what the, ew, I'm really close. Uh, that's about as far as I go. All right, so let's see what the tightening up that side did. If we can get these bolt holes to line up a little bit, that'd be great. That's definitely, let's get the jack out of the way. I guess we don't need it anymore. Oh no, I see. It cannot be wider on the inboard side. Oh, what a bummer. I didn't see this. Okay, I'm gonna have to get the camera here. Show you this. All right, design design change. Um, you see how these bolt holes have to get moved over. Hopefully you can see this, okay. And then I've got an interference fit over on this side. Whoops. So I need to grind off. I'm going to go get a pen and mark this. About a quarter inch of material there so that I can make these things fit. I'm going to have to do it probably to both of them, I would imagine. So, oh. what a bummer. Well, you don't know until you know. Okay, so I came in here and relieved a, a, you know, a quarter inch of metal, maybe a little bit more coming in here. And hopefully this gives uh, enough clearance to come in here and fit this. Okay, so I ground both of these for a little relief and I came back and painted them. It's hotter than the pistol out, so... Things are drying fast. And then I loosened up the front again, trying to get some clearance, because as you can see, I've got a clearance issue. This is, uh, this is a hassle. This really is a hassle. This is definitely a two-man job. <laughs> Probably getting pretty close. Where are we? Hole wise, where's that all? It feels it. Okay. I don't want to tighten these things up until I got the fronts tight too. So there's that as a factor. That's definitely tightening. Okay, so good news. I made the holes all big enough to allow just enough play to fiddle faddle. That's what it looked like the factory did too, so. I don't know what the metric equivalent of 5 eighths is, probably close to 16. So I made 5 eighths inch holes so I'd have some play time. Uh, right. Well, the, cool. Cool. I'm going to tighten up the fronts like you already saw me do. Then I'm going to come back to the rears and tighten them up with impact gun because it's like uber torque. Yeah. All right. You know what I'm up to. This is the last bolt on this side. All right. 
I sense the tightness of it all. <clears throat> Yay. And I gotta get out from underneath the tractor. Actually, now we gotta fiddle around with this side, which I sure use more fiddly for reasons. Uh, although, you know what I can do real quick is test fit that other piece because it goes right here. Nothing's in the way, so I think I'm going to quick test fit that. Oh. My holes are in the right spots, but I've got just a bit of weld in the way. Wow. Right on the corner here, you're seeing where that bracket is hitting the weld. Well, if I could shuffle that forward about a quarter inch, then uh, I think all my holes would line up. I can't I can't say that for certain with with the subframe, but my holes are not lining up right now, let alone the subframe. So I guess I got to drop the subframe down again. And uh, do a little custom fitting on, on my bracket. Alrighty then. Okay, let's see if we can. Fit. Maybe what I want to do is just say, try to drive it up there with the impact gun, period. If we can't get it to just go. Huh, that went. Maybe it's just a sturdy issue. This is, I mean, loaders get bent, right? They do. <laughs> just, I don't want to have to keep modifying things. Well, that's definitely in there. Well, maybe we can get all of them to go that way then. Oh, come on. I'm, you know what? I've got a problem here. You can't see what I'm doing is the problem. The dog can't figure out why I'm not throwing the ball. All of us are having issues. All have things going on. Safety squint. That's tight. Yay! That should be fixed. That said, I think I do want to redo my armor. God, look at... This is the stupidest place for a fuel nipple ever. Right? That, that's it? That's a dumb place. That's like designed to fail. The fuel line doesn't poke up high or or perhaps uh, linearly with the with with the vehicle. No, no, it pokes out straight across, and r literally right above the plate that they have for protecting the fuel tank. So if anything can nab it and rip it off, and that's what happened to my uh, happened before, is it got ripped off. What a Dumb, dumb design. I think they fixed that on later versions. I think. That's, I think. Uh, so, while I'm here, I'm looking to see if any of these bolts holding this loader on are working. And I don't see any working, so, cool. No loose bolts is a good thing. All right, let's get out of here. I think I want to redo my, my armor, though. Skid plate. That is a, just a dumb design. Okay, let's see if we can't uh, get this thing back together. The tab goes on the inboard side. Oh. 
like I said, I got half an inch more material on both sides, so that's a one inch wider plate than the OEM. And so hopefully this will be the last time in my lifetime I have to fix this. Okay, YouTube, this is my old skid plate, which is three pieces of 16 gauge. And what seems to keep happening here is the front end crumples up and gets messed up. And this will be the second or third time I've hammered this flat if I hammer it flat. And I'm giving up. So I ran off to Bemidji Steel and I picked up a, an eighth inch aluminum boiler plate. I don't know what series aluminum this is, but it sure seems tougher than what I have. And so I've got to take some dimensions out of my tractor and cut out a new skid plate. And then I'm going to mount it. That was loud. <laughs> oh. Maybe having the special aluminum blades worth it. Just want to take the sharp corners off of it. All right, YouTube. So I've got this clamped in temporarily. I'm just using a vice grip, uh, like a welder's clamp there. And I see that on the other side, I'm uh, I'm as far forward as I need to be, uh, right there. Okay, and I got this as far forward as I need to be on the left-hand side of the lower subframe mount for the loader. And what I'm going to do here is I see I got a clearance issue, and. Uh, so I'm going to come in here and trace, just make a little minor trace with, with a pen, just so I know where to cut. Okay, so now I've got to drill some holes for the U-clamps that are going to hold this to the subframe on the tractor. So the good news is these holes really only have to be approximate because I've got such a big plate on the bottom uh, for a nut plate. So they just have to be close enough for horseshoes and hand grenades. thing I got to do my uh, mean oil drain is right in right in this location I haven't done a precise bit of measuring but kind of a little dead reckoning in one measurement we'll see how I do especially since I want to use the world's biggest cutting tooth so I think I'll have generous amounts of missing it and still being close enough with this here so Down, little girl. There we go. Oh, that's hot. Drill's way hotter than the bit.
darkness. YouTube you'll see how this bends up and folds and I may end up having to go with steel plate I was trying to keep it light so you know this plate's probably 30 pounds and I'm just trying to keep it light enough so when I'm fiddling with it it's not, not like an event anyway we'll see how this works out but it's got to be better than the folded up steel that I have over there so anyway till we meet again and also for you people who are subscribed give it a thumbs up otherwise the AI God that is the algorithm forgets to notify you when I publish new videos and that's kind of a bummer for both of us anyway YouTube that's what I got to share with you uh, if you like this video then give me a thumbs up and if you want to see more then definitely subscribe because it happens in my life my field of failure happens anyway till we meet again YouTube bye bye